What's your favorite season of the year? I feel like it's universal for everybody. I feel like uh, summer, however, I'm going to be different and say I actually prefer fall, I think. So your universal theory is not correct because I polled the audience. Summer is second. Fall is number one. I personally think that spring is the best season of the year because it's full of hope. I think that people are a little bit nicer, a little bit cheery in spring. But spring is actually last. Summer is, fall is number one, 43%. Summer, number two, 38%. Spring, 10%. And winter, 11%. I don't think anybody looks at uh, spring and thinks, man, that's hope right there. It's new life. But also Seattle is very dreary in the winter. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm just a little biased to that. But I think spring is an underrated season. Lots of promise in spring. Last week, we had two days where it was 65 degrees. We got to no, we're talking, we're talking about the weather. I just realized that, that this entire episode started off with us talking about the weather. Does, does, okay, does, I have never really been annoyed by small talk. Does small talk annoy you? It doesn't bother me at all. I actually kind of enjoy it. I think anyone who listens to this podcast would think you hate small talk. I don't like talking really about movies or celebrities or sports or things like that. I actually would rather talk about the weather than movies. Uh, I will say fall is my favorite season because not only does it have usually the best temperatures of the year, but it's probably the best food. Summer is the best food. In the fall, you at least have usually three or four, two or three weeks where it's just kind of chilly out and you have some chili, maybe something else, maybe some stew. I Something think that, like that summer has the best food. You're talking about pie, hot dogs, cheeseburgers, ice cream. Summer has America. the best food. But are you okay with small talk with people you don't know? Say you're, say you're on an airplane. Are you going to be okay with somebody next to you just talking the entire flight? No, because I'm never going to see that person again. I don't want somebody I'm never going to see in my entire life talking to me all the time. But if it's somebody in your daily occurrence, then you have to make small talk. Because how else are you going to find out if you know that person or you're going to like that person or maybe you're going to be friends with that person or whatever. Like you've got to have the small talk to get through anything else. You got to do the basics. I just, okay, here, okay, here's my problem with small talk is I feel like everyone's answers are predetermined for the most part. I feel like small talk is the most in or unpersonable conversation you can have with somebody. But I think that you have to have that to get to the other stuff. Uh, all right. We're back to uh, just I just want your first impressions here. Okay. Of uh, Bring up a topic. You just give me your first impression. Uh, the royal family in this picture gate. I'm fascinated. I love it. I love it. Both you and I come from working in media. You still work in media. I do public relations stuff. I'm fascinated by it because whatever the real answer is has to be much worse than all of the conspiracy theories. And I love, I don't believe them, but I love a good conspiracy theory. I just, I I don't get it. Um, Obviously something is way worse than the Royal family is, is, is leading on because why wouldn't you now what it's been almost two months? Why wouldn't you just come out and say something of validity it just it, it, it makes no sense there has to be whatever the reason is there has to be more of a reason behind that right so let's well, just say it's her health well it can't just be her health it also has to be something that she really doesn't want revealed so it has to be well, not only the reason but then another reason behind that reason so whatever the truth is, it has to be so much worse for them just to like not say anything. When you're getting us talking about it, it's a big deal. I did read one thing, and this is all. This is the last thing I'll say about it. Was that what if this is all a PR stunt by the royals to gain interest in the royal family again? Well, then they've flown too close to the sun because now it's swung in the other direction. Yeah, but you know that it's going to come back around that, you know, we always wanted our privacy and this and that. And I'm sorry, to me, when you are a royal or somebody in that kind of, I guess, celebrity sphere, 
you don't really have it. I mean, I get family privacy, but it's been two months now and nobody knows, you know, you're editing photos, you're, you know, false information, just one sentence. That's why the, whatever the truth is has to be so much worse. Like it has to be so much worse. And people, they, I, it always comes out. They always find out. It is weird. Very weird. Okay. All right. Uh, Joanne Fabrics. I hate Joanne Fabrics. I loathe Joanne Fabrics. <laughs> Joanne Fabrics and Michaels and any of those kind of stores are the only stores that I go into and start to feel physically sick. I feel ill going into a Joanne Fabrics or a Michaels. It makes me nauseous. Now, let me ask you, are you okay with like a Hobby Lobby? Nope. Okay. Any of those kind of stores where it is just, for me personally, just crap. Like, this is all just crap to me. If it's your thing, that's cool. It's not my thing. But I walk in there and I feel physically sick. Hate it. Well, good good news for you, Joanne. Uh, fabrics file for bankruptcy, so they may not be around for much longer. I can't believe a store like that even exists. To be honest with you, it it is it is it does shock me every time you see a brick and mortar like that that is still around and has been around for many years. Uh what <laughs> what would be a more det- detestful place to you? Hell. Or spring spring ba- break in Jacksonville Beach. I can't even say. Well, hell, dude. I mean, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I don't. <laughs> I don't care what like how bad spring break in Jacksonville Beach is. I'm still don't want to go to hell. Like that's pretty easy answer. Like the worst place imaginable or Jacksonville. Like I get the question, but now I see those spring break things, and I just want. Oh God, I want nothing to do with that. Oh yeah, like, I, know. I don't want to be don't there know. at all. And it's, uh, did you ever, when you were uh, in high school or college, did you ever travel from, from you know, home to, to go to Florida for spring break? No, I never did any spring break stuff. Even in college, I never did any spring break stuff. One time when I was 18, I went to Cancun for a senior year trip. But other than that, like a large number of drunk, hot, sweaty people is something that I would really <laughs> like to avoid. Yeah, and now it seems... I you, obviously you can't end spring break, but you know Miami had the crackdown. What was it last year? Now it's Jacksonville. I just, it just nothing about that seems enticing to me. I think there's also something about it when you get like the rookie kind of phenomenon, in which it's people who aren't usually partying, or the people who are so hard partying. Like you get either this side or you get that side, and there's not really that middle ground to kind of balance everything out. It's either the first timers or the like, I haven't been to class in six years timers. And that's just not a good combination to me. I look at it and like, oh, I don't want anything to do with that. I will say in kind of relation to that, so St. Patrick's Day was just this past Sunday. uh, And I had absolutely no desire to do anything. I didn't want to go out to the bars. I didn't want to go out Sunday morning. Nothing. Hmm. I'd like a good St. Patrick's Day. I'd like a good Cinco de Mayo. I would actually put those days up above New Year's. Okay. All right. I mean, maybe if I was 10 years younger, maybe, but not now. Okay. Let me sleep in. Good. Uh, <laughs> does this, does uh, the NCAA Division One men's basketball tournament, do you care at all about that? My only thing that annoys me about that is all the analysts acting as if they've spent the entire season watching East Jacksonville Central State University, and now they somehow know something about it when they have absolutely no idea until they looked at the roster sheet five minutes before who even plays on the team. So that's the only thing that annoys me is people acting like, oh, yeah, that's that guy, and he's totally got to watch out for him. They have no idea what they're talking about. Just none. Otherwise, it's cool. I like it. I like a good bracket. Kind of a follow up to that, uh, the Long Beach State, the Long Beach State Beach men's basketball team made the tournaments with a coach of whom they fired the week before the tournament. So he's going to coach them, even though even though he knows he won't have a job after the tournament, and he led them to their first NCAA tournaments 
I think, ever. I mean, did what he, a terrible way. What a did, terrible thing. Did he get fired because he wasn't a good coach, or did he get fired for something else? Uh, I mean, if he was I, I, doing something else, then, like, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, hey, I'm man, not a, stealing office supplies. Like, well. Not, not entirely sure, but he seems to be, I mean, he's been there since 2012. So I don't, oh, well, I mean, that doesn't. Well, whatever, shake the thing up, man. Maybe got him the motivation he needed. Hope, he, hope, hope, mean, the, hope the best for everybody. Well, I don't know about you, but I put my money on Long Beach State Beach. That's even I their can't game. believe there's a school named Long Beach. How many analyst experts are there suddenly about Long Beach State Beach? Following the team the whole oh. year, watched every game. <laughs> I will say this: that March Madness, and for our international viewers, if you're not familiar with it, it's basically 64 teams, Division One, uh, NCAA basketball. They go into a bracket, they play, and they they're seeded, right? So one through 16. Sometimes you have 15 seeds, like like the Long Beach States, beat a Kentucky, and that's huge. I was going to say, I don't think there's any other tournament like that in the world uh, in sports to where you could have and a single elimination, so you only have one game to either show up or not show up. And I don't think there's another sport, pro, or college that's like that. It's pretty enthralling, really. I think it's, I think it's a good example of what happens when somebody gets an opportunity. That you can look at this one thing and think that, oh, it's so good and all this kind of stuff. But when sometimes if you give people opportunity, you can be surprised. Like one shot, one opportunity. What, how does the rest of it go? You got one shot. Mom's spaghetti. That's the only one not line that I remember from Mom's that. Ter- Sorry, you know what? If Eminem's listening to this, I apologize. But his pop-up restaurant in Detroit, if you're ever thinking about visiting Detroit for that, just for that alone... You should not just come to Detroit for mom's spaghetti. It's not worth it. Oh, well, you don't live in Detroit, so. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, Mount St. Helens. Oh, man, I live in Seattle. That's close to me, man. That's a big deal. I don't think, like, and Rainier, which is an even bigger mountain, I think it's always been a bigger mountain. I think that Mount St. Helens kind of, like, lost some height after it exploded. But, like, you see Mount Rainier, which is close by, and then you think, like, oh, that's a massive volcano. Like, you better watch out. Like, you, we think that we're pretty sweet, but nature's still in control. You've ever been on a cruise ship in the middle of the ocean, and you just look out, and you just see nothing but blue to black water, and you're like, wow, maybe we are just little specks of, of nothing. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to ask you about uh, the crazy day that was the NFL free agency swaps but to be honest with you i don't know anything i'm gonna that. ask you yeah who some players are you won't know so in saying <laughs> in saying that i will ask you caitlin clark do you care do you not care oh she seems like she's great i, I don't know anything about it i think the ultimate question is always right like what would they do on a men's team and I think that that's always going to be a big struggle with women's sports because men will always wonder, well, like, how would they compare to a men's team? But she's a fantastic here, player doing great things for the sport. Here, here's, here's the reason why I bring it up is she set a bunch of records, maybe all of them, really. Uh, it seems like people are breaking records and setting records at a rampant pace in the pros and college everywhere. Do you think it's because the athletes are just getting that much better? Yeah, or because they're they're playing that much longer because of the way that we can take care of ourselves comparatively to how people used to take care of themselves even forty years ago. I think that just athletes are getting that much better, and that's why I never understand people who are on TV or people who make these arguments. Well, back in the day, they used to be better. Like, no, they weren't. The athletes <laughs> of today would always beat the athletes of yesteryear. They were always better. The ones today are always better. There isn't technology that gets worse over time for the most part, unless it's a complete decision by that company. So technology always gets better, and the athletes always get better. There is no athlete of yesterday who is better than the athletes of today. It doesn't compare. They're always better. All right, two more things here. Uh, green beer. Oh, that's cool. Good. Hey, man, sell the beer. Right, whatever you need to do. Diet green. It's like, oh, okay, cool. I mean, it, that's, that's, I think it's amazing in the sense that, like, that's really all it takes. That's really <laughs> all it takes for us to do something like, go oh, buy it and turn it green. Like, that's all we Just, need. Any it. excuse uh, is a good excuse. 
And finally, uh, would you say the Leprechaun is the worst, I guess, mascot for any of the major holidays? It has to be. <laughs> I mean, I hope that people aren't going to take that in an offensive way, but the mascot has to be the worst of all of the major holidays, right? Because you got the Easter Bunny. The Easter Bunny's above the Leprechaun. Obviously, Santa Claus is above the Leprechaun. Halloween, any of those characters are above the Leprechaun. It's the that, leprechaun, that's it, right? It? It's the, oh, well, the turkey, even turkeys are above leprechauns? Oh, yeah, turkey's above leprechauns. Now, that said, is Cupid above leprechauns, though? I would say Cupid's probably above leprechauns, too, to be honest with you. Yeah, by far, for sure, 100%. Now, if, like, Flag Day had a mascot, so the leprechaun is the worst of the mascots, <laughs> but that's because other holidays are so bad they don't even have mascots. So it's like you're yeah. the worst of the best. I mean, if Flag, Day, if Flag Day had a giant flag as a mascot, it would still be better than a leprechaun. Oh, well. Depends on the flag. I mean, if it was like a really sweet design, then I might have to go with it. But I, I would, my gut reaction is to say no. I disagree with you. But if it was a sweet flag, I'd be like, yeah, that's a pretty cool flag. All right, that's it. Let's move on. All right. So our top five is a different one. We'll see how this works out. Top five racks. What's your number five? What? Oh, man. I want to be so inappropriate. However, that one rack all... is not going to, it's not on my list because I felt like that was too far. But obviously that would be number one. Yeah, let's would be that. Men or, men or women, I think that's the easy number one. So oh, yeah, chest rack. That... Would be the number with, one rack, but we're not including chest racks. With that, <laughs> with that out of the way, uh, my number five is I'm gonna go with a cooling rack. Oh, okay, okay. That's not something a lot of people are gonna have, but I see the purposes of it. Are you gonna put a cooling rack above a drying rack? No, but I, I think cooling racks are important. I don't think people, if you have them. You understand the importance of them, whether it's for cookies or for whatever, anything coming out of an oven or a toaster oven or anything. They're very important, and they're very, uh, I think, undervalued kitchen uh, utensils, supplies, whatever. Dork. How many racks do you have? How many cooling oh, racks do you have? How many do you got? I mean, thinking about what I have, probably four. Anyways, Why do you have four cooling racks? And just for clarification, name? how many pairs of tongs do you have right now? I, mean, I probably have 10 to 12 pairs of tongs and four cooling racks. When have you ever cooled more than one thing at a time? Been like, you know well, what? I'm I got a lot of things cooking. You can only have one thing in the oven. So why would you need more than one cooling rack? Well, I mean, you know, if, if you're using the... Um, the toaster oven, you're using the regular oven. And this is happening. Maybe. Tell me what. Tell me exactly a situation in which you needed more than one cooling rack. I mean, Taco Tuesday nights when you're making some tostadas, maybe trying to warm the, the, uh, the taco shells, take them out, put them on the cooling rack, et cetera. Okay. I mean, it's a, so that's not one, that uncommon. That's one thing that you're using. What do you need the other I mean, three cooling racks for? You make pizza. But you you're not. You're, see, you're not giving me an example no. of when you're using two cooling racks at the same time. I just time. did. I just did. You put pizza. You made on taco one, and bread you on made, the other. You made tacos and you made pizza at the same time. No, uh, no, it's the two cooling racks for the same meal. So you made tacos and pizza at the same time. No, 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 no. Let's just go back to making pizza. I put the pizza on one cooling rack, the breadsticks on another cooling rack. Okay, so but you have actually done that. Yes. Okay, now that would work as an example because the example you were giving me before are just two different instances of when you could use a rack as opposed to the time when you needed to use both no. racks at the same time. That's what I'm saying. No, Anyways, what's your number five? You still have two extra racks that are unaccounted for. Even if you have pizza and breadsticks going at the same time, you still have two extra racks that you don't need. I'm just trying to help you save money. And you're resisting it because you just want to have more stuff that you don't need. It's already spent, so... I know, but you're going to go farther, and you're going to get another rack. And you're going to get another rack. 
maybe, maybe. Don't Maybe do I'll it. get one by this by the time we record next week, and I'll wear it on my head. Just think to yourself: Do I need this? Do I need this, or do I want this? Trust me, I think about that every day. <laughs> and the answer is both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on. My number five is a roof rack. Roof rack okay. is a great thing, but the only problem that I have with it is you got to put stuff on the roof, and you generally don't want to do that. Like I don't want to go up there. So I, I actually I have that. So we'll we'll come to my explanation okay. Okay. In, a, okay. in a few minutes. Uh, my number four is a power rack. Oh, because you lifting now. <laughs> well, I've always been a fan of uh, power racks. You can squat. You can do it. I mean, they're they're so universal. Meat and potatoes. So, Mean, yeah, exactly. Basic stuff, but I mean, they're they're pivotal to to core and strength training. Okay, for people who aren't familiar, a power rack is basically the thing that you like. You go to the gym, and people will be like squatting in it, benching in it, or just standing in it. For most of the gyms that I go to, just standing there. Really, okay, that's a good one. My number four is a bike rack. I think without bike racks, there would be chaos in the world. Just bikes everywhere. You gotta have bike racks. I don't have bike rack be a uh, bike rack on my list, but I can see why you would have bike rack on the list. It would be chaos, man. It would be pure <laughs> chaos without bike racks in the world. So my number three is car rack. Oh, okay, okay. I can call it a roof rack. I don't know why you would call it car rack. Yeah. I mean, car rack, roof rack, oh. truck rack, muck rack, whatever you want to call it. Okay, okay. My number three is a clothing rack. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> you got nothing. Yeah, I got nothing. All right. This is gonna be. This is gonna be the. This is gonna be the big ones. Uh, what's I'm, your number two? Uh, a sales rack. I have sales rack at number one. I think sales rack is the best kind of rack. Oh no. Oh no, my friend. My number one is the best kind of rack either way. Maybe better than the racks we were talking about before we got into the top five list. It definitely would change as you get older. Like, as I was a younger man, the chest rack would be the number one. But as I've gotten older, I found that honestly, it's probably the sales rack is my favorite kind of rack as I've gotten older. But my number two is probably your number one, which is the spice rack. No, actually. I didn't even put Spice Rack on my list. You're going to have four different cooling racks and 15 tongs, and you don't even have Spice Rack on your list. S- spice Rack is good. It's, on my, it's one of my, the few things on my, on my honorable mention. I don't know how you leave Spice Rack off the list. It's a ridiculous. My number one is Meat Rack. Mm. Baby back ribs, uh, a rack of ribs, a rack of lamb. Rack of sausage. Give me all the meats. Give me a rack of meats. It's the best kind of rack. How many meat racks do you have? Uh, I mean, that's a tough question, to be honest with you. I mean, I I for sure have two of them. uh, But I don't know if they classify as as a meat rack. Mm, Okay, it's debatable. All right. If... Take away the rack part of it and just the meat itself, a rack of ribs, you know, rack of lamb. Like, yes, yes. That's pretty good. Do you have anything in your honorable mention? Well, I did have spice rack. The reason why I didn't put spice rack on my list is I have one, but I, that's pretty messy. They're not necessarily always in the spice rack. That makes any sense. Uh, so if I was more uh, capable, I would probably put it on my top five. But because I'm sloppy, uh, it's not. Uh, but I have that. I have a, I have a cooling or a, a, an oven rack, I'm sorry, uh, and then a drying rack. Hmm. That, was, that was it. Okay, I think you would have more room for your spice rack if you didn't have all this other crap that you don't need. I think that would be an easier thing. Look, I'm just trying to help you out, and I don't understand why you were so resistant to my aid. I'm sorry, did you say you have AIDS? The only other thing that I have on honorable mention is a hat rack. 
Hat racks are good. And once again, maybe like what you said about something earlier, maybe I was like 15 years younger. But now, as I get older, I am realizing that I have a full head of hair and I should not cover it all the time with hats. Yeah. So. If you have, you see somebody wearing a lot of hats, you know that there that is a person that's going to be bald or is bald or is <laughs> balding. Right? Or just very angry all the time. <laughs> 